been more than four years since Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe was jailed in Iran on spying charges, which she's always strongly denied. But in a new Panorama programme airing tonight, it's been revealed that she should have been freed in 2017 and her husband Richard says she was even given a release date. He believes Nazanin and many other hostages are being held because of a £400 million debt between Britain and Iran. Let's take a look. Well, Richard Ratcliffe joins us now. Good morning to you. Thanks very much for joining morning, us this Thomas. morning. And, you know, we, we speak to you on a, on a regular basis to keep track of what's been going on. It must be so hard for you in this particular instance when you were given a release date, you pin your hopes on it and then they're dashed. It's such a horrific situation. I think that's right. That that particular moment. So the expectations. Um, I mean, it, it, for those who don't remember, back in in autumn 2017, we became big news. Uh, the then Foreign Secretary, now Prime Minister, went out to Tehran to try and sort uh, Nazanin's case out. Um, things seemed to move forward, and then we even got given a, um, a date to say that she was coming home from the embassy. So yeah, we were our, our, we were really upbeat, and obviously when that didn't happen, um, it was disorienting at the beginning, and and then yeah, devastating. Um, certainly when more people got picked up, it, uh, it, it was a very hard time. Um, and I think generally, I mean, I, you're right, I've been on your show a number of times um, and it's been up and down. Sometimes we felt close, sometimes we felt a long way away. Um, and part of the, the endurance is, is to keep going, not to get too hopeful when we get close, but also um, not to be too bleak at the same time. Mm. Uh, now, Richard, th this issue of the £400 million debt, which goes back to 1979, the days of the Shah of Iran. And, but the, the Iranian authorities and the UK Foreign Office um, uh, are, sort of are, are in dispute here. The, the line from the UK government is that there is absolutely no connection at all between the debt that needs to be paid and the release of Nazanin and, and many other people like her. What, what do you say to that? Well, well, of course, there should be no link. Um, it, it's completely outrageous to be holding people and using them as, as collateral. Um, behind closed doors, the government will, will admit things. Certainly, um, previous ministers uh, have been quite open with us. Um, and, and yes, I think it, it's fair that, that neither government likes to be too honest about what was going on. Um, what, what I really appreciate about the Panorama programme was that they were straightforward. Um, they have called Nazanin a hostage. They have said, well, listen, this is you know, what we can see, this is what's going on. It, it's a very interesting programme. Um, and it just, you know, I, I don't think Nazanin and all the others are protected by pretending the situation is different from, from what it is. It's been more than four years now since Nazanin was jailed. She's out under house arrest at the moment because of the situation in Iran with coronavirus. What do you think will be the next step? Are you, are you optimistic that that situation will continue? Do you have fears that she will end up being taken back into prison? Uh, so I think the situation is likely to stay with inertia where it is at the moment. Um, my fears, you know, Nazanin will be counting down the, the months until the end of her sentence. So her sentence ends officially next next spring. Um, I think they they behind closed doors. They keep saying, listen, there's a second court case. And they keep talking about running it. Um, my fear is that that's what happens. Um, clearly, there's a standoff between the UK and Iran. Uh, there is a new hearing for this debt case coming up in a couple of months. Um, there'll be negotiations, no doubt, behind closed doors. So I think we will be the downstream consequences uh, of what happens in those negotiations. Mm. Hopefully that'll be good news for us and she'll be home soon, um, but it may not be. Mm. And, and how is Nazanin's health? I mean, at one point we were quite worried, weren't we? And, you know, you've been on this show before and spoken about how she was, wasn't very well at all. Is she, is she better now? Is she in a good state? Uh, so she's up and down. I, I think it, you know... As all your viewers would expect, being out of prison is a lot better than being in prison. And yes, she's under house arrest, but at least she can see her mum. Um, so probably she came out in March. Um, I think that really lifted her spirits, really lifted her physically. Certainly the worry we had about COVID-19 have, have gone away and she's not contracted any symptoms since. Um, where she is now, it probably... I mean, the downside of where she is is she's very isolated. So uh, effectively, she sits with an ankle tank. She can't go anywhere and no one dares visit. Um, that was lovely for a couple of weeks, being able to call friends. But, but after five months, it is very isolating. And, and certainly, she was very desolate over the weekend. Um, generally, I think the situation for Nazanin, for all the British hostages who are being held, it's psychologically. The, the fact that you're almost out, then you're not, then you're back in. Then all sorts of games are being made to call to the authorities to check what's happening. And she literally has two bags packed, one for going home to the UK, one for going back to prison. That really messes with your head over time. Oh, so, yeah, she's up and down.
I'm not surprised. It must be such a hard situation for her. And how is Gabriella, who's back in the UK with you now? Obviously, it's been a time of great change, hasn't it? Because she just got used to being at school. Then lockdown happened. She wasn't at school. Um, no doubt you were trying to balance a bit of homeschooling at the same time. And I imagine, is she looking forward to, to going back to school? Yeah, no, she, she's definitely looking forward to going back to school. I think she's a firm believer that, that you know, children are more fun to play with than grown-ups. Um, and, and certainly I found, like most of the country, uh, that homeschooling was, was not my skill set. It was tough. Um, and, and, yeah, I think she's young enough that she just lives in the moment. Um, you see, you know, we were able to go to Cornwall last week. She, she was happily enjoying it. Um, but, yeah, most evenings she will be quite tearful and miss Mummy. She will, you know, ask her when Mummy's coming back. She, she certainly was, you know, discussing with yesterday how long it's been since Mummy had cuddled her. So she's beginning to be aware and, and aware that her story is different from everyone else's and that that's not fair.